Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today's video I wanted to show you how you can make a crochet hook wrap to store your crochet hooks in. Now my, this is one that was my mother's. She, when she passed away three years ago um, and we're going through all of her belongings, we found dozens of crochet hooks and knitting needles and um, since my other sisters do not knit or crochet, I wound up with them. Um, she had a couple of these wraps and um, and then I have a whole bunch of crochet hooks that aren't in. These are crochet hooks and knitting needles that are not in a case. Okay, this is the wrap that my mother had her steel crochet hooks in. Uh, are one set of her steel crochet hooks. We found out that she has several sets of these. Um, I'm not sure why she had so many, but um, she did. And um, this is what she was keeping them in. And I think she probably picked these up at a craft fair or something. And it has a little pocket here with slots in it. And there's room for just one crochet hook in each slot. And it has a tie on one side and it has um, a flap here so that you can cover these and hopefully they will stay in and then it just folds up and you wrap this around and you tie it. Okay, here's my, my mock-up. And it is the same as, as these here. I, I followed the, the pattern size, just made it a little bit wider and these channels I made are about um, five-eighths of an inch wide. So that works best for these kinds of crochet hooks. I can put, I can put, you know, one in each one of these slots and they're snug enough that they're not going to um, immediately fall out. And I've got this long enough that it's going to cover those up. So I think that will work well for these. So I also rounded the edges. I made the, the bias binding for it and stitched that on. I, I did the same stitching up here so that flap will come down. Um, things that we could do different <coughs> would be to make this flap a little bit longer. Could also make this channel a little bit longer. And I may do that on the next one. Um, so anyway, uh, I thought I would bring you along as I work on a new version of this and uh, show you how I'm going to go about this. Okay, if you want to make one of these crochet wraps, there's just uh, a little bit of material that you need for this. You're going to need two pieces of fabric that are 9 inches wide by 14 inches long. One is going to be your decorative like your outer and then you need something for your lining. Um, on this one I used all the decorative fabric on the inside and then I used the plain fabric on the outside. You can do that however you want. You'll need uh, a piece of batting or fusible fleece that measures the same size 9 by 14 and then you'll need some bias binding or you'll need to make some bias binding and you'll need two inch wide pieces and you'll need about you need about 45 to 46 inches. So I'm going to start, um, I'm going to use this piece of fusible fleece. And on this piece I just used an 80-20 batting and that works fine. But I'm going to use the fusible fleece and I'm going to fuse that to my plain fabric, my lining fabric. And so I'm going to lay my fusible fleece down first and then lay the fabric on top and you need to be careful so that your the fusible on your fleece isn't showing through that you can use uh, another piece of fabric over top of this to uh, prevent it from sticking to your um, iron so I have a I have a scrap of just some cotton fabric here that I'm going to use as a pressing cloth and then follow the directions on your fleece as to how to press this whether you need steam how long you need to hold the heat 
hold your iron on and how hot you need your iron. Just follow the directions for that. So I'm going to fuse all of this. Okay, so now it's all fused on. Next thing I want to do is to mark out a quilting design on here. Now you could probably get away without doing that, but I think it would be more secure if there was some quilting on it. Like on this one, I didn't have any fusible, so I did just a crosshatch quilting design. And to do the quilting design, I'm going to use a 45 degree mark on my ruler. And mark a line and I'm going to make mine all one inch apart so and this is a general's charcoal pencil is what I'm using and you can use any any kind of marking pen that works well for you or pencil and I'm just going to continue and mark this all up and um, then I'll get back with you and show you how I'm going to quilt this Okay, I have all of my markings on it, so I'm going to layer my decorative fabric on top. And just even lay it all the raw edges even the best I can. And now I'm going to pin it so that I can quilt it. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over because I want to do the quilting from this side where I can see all my marks. So I'm just going to put some pins in to hold it. You can use uh, safety pins if you want. And you could just do clips on the side if you want. So I'm just going to get this all pinned together and then I'm going to take it to my domestic sewing machine. And you could do this on the long arm too if you wanted or you can purchase um, pre-quilted fabric and then you can skip this step okay now I'm ready to get this quilted on my domestic sewing machine okay to quilt this on my domestic machine I have put on my walking foot and I'm going to just find a place to start and just some stitch with a regular stitch, a straight stitch. I have this set at uh, 2.5 in length and uh, I'm just going to follow the lines that I have drawn on here. going to stop with the needle down really close to the edge and then just stitch down to the next line and then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to remove the pins as I come to them so that I'm not um, having to deal with those and just go down that next line. I have the piece all quilted and there's the print side and there's the plain side. Now I need to cut this. Uh, first thing I want to do is to square it up. It looks uh, pretty square to me but I'm going to double check and square it up a little bit. Now I need to cut it to fit. Okay, I went ahead and I marked where I wanted to cut and I went ahead and I made these cuts. And um, what I want is the main piece here to be seven by nine inches. So um, I cut off this piece here and then here's the pocket and it is three inches deep by seven inches wide and that's going to go here. 
and then this piece is left over so you have these two extra pieces and the next thing I want to do is to mark the channels for my crochet hooks now in this set these these uh, channels are about three eighths of an inch apart and they are in here and they're they're nice and snug but um, I'm going to make them just a little bit wider I'm hoping to avoid this pulling in so much so I'm going to do these channels at a half inch so I'm going to take into consideration that I'm going to have a quarter inch seam allowance here from my my bias binding so I'm going to go in three quarters of an inch for my first line and mark it with this one is an air soluble pen but you can use whatever you have and let me try this pen's a little darker there we go and I'm just going to mark these channels all the way across okay so now these are all marked so I can see them and now we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to start putting all of this together the next thing I need to do though is to bind this piece before I sew it on to the base and um, they're already cut on the 45 degree angle so I just need to uh, lay them over and uh, sew those and have a, about a quarter of an inch overhang here so I'm going to go ahead and sew those and make one long strip and then I'm going to press that to make my binding my uh, bias binding and I still have my walking foot on and I'm just going to leave that on there because it will come in handy later on when I'm sewing on that bias binding so I'm just going to leave it and just use my quarter inch mark that's on the bed of my machine here and just sew these pieces together Okay, so I've got all these sewn together and I'm just going to press open the seams. And you can finger press them or you can use your iron. I'm going to use my iron. This will help reduce the bulk. And one last seam. And then I'm just going to snip the little dog ears off. Okay, now to make the bias binding, what I'm going to do is to uh, press all of this in half lengthwise. Just being careful not to stretch this since it's, it's biased now, it's all on the biased edge. So I um, just have to be careful with it. And if you're wanting to know what uh, fabric this is, this is a Kona cotton solid. Okay, so now it is all pressed in half lengthwise. Now I need to uh, turn each edge in to the press seam like this and fold it over and press it. So what I'm going to do is just do one side at a time. Now if you have a bias tape maker, um, this would go a lot faster, but I do not happen to have one. So um, I'm going to do this. Okay, and then just fold in the other side. And just bring that to the center fold. Just like you did the first side. Okay, now I have that all made. And... Um, 
just going to fold it over and give it another quick press. And now I need a piece to um, cover the edge of this. So um, I'm going to just cut a little piece. And then I'm going to encase that in the pocket piece and sew that down close to the fold, the inside fold here. Okay, so I'm just going to place this inside and fold this over and then stitch it. I just need to catch both sides of this bias binding. And if you want to, you can put a decorative stitch on there if you want. I'm just going to use a straight stitch. And I want to check, make sure I'm catching both sides and that seems to be working fine. And then here we have one side and then we have the other. So if you get, um, this is the side, this side is going to go in, it won't be seen and you can see that the, the stitching is quite a ways away from this edge which ideally I'd like it a little closer but this is the side that is going to show and I think this looks pretty good so I'm happy with this. So I'm going to trim off these ends that overlap the end and uh, we'll pin all this together. So you have to decide which is your which is your top. This this pattern here on this uh, floral really to me doesn't show much of a top or bottom so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pin this in place. I'm just going to put one pin on each end to kind of hold it in place. And then I'm going to sew this down and I'm going to do it just sh shy of a quarter of an inch of an inch because I want the um, bias binding to go over that. need to backstitch because this will be secured when you put the bias binding on. So I've got a good start here and now I'm going to sew the channels and I'm just going to, let's see, okay I'm going to start this direction. And I'm going to just sew all the way up. Now I'm going to back stitch and just stitch it right on top of that previous stitching. And then just move over and do the same thing.
Now you can drag your stitches like you did the last time or you can stop with your needle down and turn it and um, say I need one more stitch and then like this. Okay, all the channels are stitched in now. And um, now I want to do some rounding of the corners here, like up here and then down at the bottom. They'll just make um, doing the bias edge a little bit easier. You can see on this one, I rounded the corners here and down here uh, because this, this sample was rounded at the top. Um, on the bottom, it's rounded a little. And on this one, um, they left it square, but they tried to just pull that bias binding around it without rounding it off. So you could do it either way. But I do want to, um, I'm going to go ahead and leave, I think, this edge um, straight. And then, but I do want to round the corners. So you can use anything you have around that has a curved edge on it. You could use a coffee cup. Um, I've got this little cup here that I use to pour water into my iron. So I'm just going to use that and I'm just going to mark it. And I'll do that on both sides. And that'll give me a curved edge. There we go. So now we're ready to start putting the bias on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on one edge. I'm going to start right about up here. And just start wrapping that around. And then I'm going to stitch it all the way down to the end. And then I'm going to treat this like I do um, a quilt bindings when I get to this edge. I'm going to stop at a quarter inch. I'll pull this. I'll just pull this around and then tuck this under to make my miter like that. And I'll show you that when I get to that point. So anyway, we're going to encase this whole thing in this bias binding and uh, sew this down. Okay, to do that I'm going to put the start the bias binding on the side and just wrap that around and then just sew it close to the fold. Once again, I want to make sure I'm catching the back side. So I'm going to check, and that's doing well. So just keep sewing it down. got to the corner so I'm going to go ahead and um, break the thread here and then fold this miter around
as I get around these corners, I just need to guide that bias tape around it. Um, if you have a stylus that will help kind of guide your um, your bias binding help get it to go where, where you want it to and help it lay smoothly Um, extra here so I'm going to trim this off up here and then this end I'm going to fold in so that I don't have a raw edge there I'm going to go ahead and trim off the threads at my starting point And then I'm just going to encase that raw edge there. So this is all going to just go right inside. here we have um, in the back it did not catch I didn't catch the back side in a couple places so I restitched that so I can take out the stitching that's closest to the inside and just remove that and then it'll be okay so now I need to go ahead and fold this over and then I'm going to sew a about an eighth of an inch away from this folded edge So I have that stitched and that'll help keep that flap closed. And then the next thing I need to do is to sew on the ties and I'm going to take the fabric that I have here and I'm going to sew that together. So I'm going to go ahead and take this short edge and fold it under. I'm going to finger press that and then I'm going to fold all this tape in on the folds that I made when I pressed it and then I'm going to stitch it down where the two folded edges meet to make a, a bias tape tie. OK, 
Okay, so I have made my strip a bias. I just stitched it close to the where the two folded edges meet and I'm going to turn off the threads and I need to cut it down to size now. And what I want to do first is I want to tie a knot into one end and slide it down as close to the end as I can. And I want 20 inches is what I want. So I'm going to measure this. And here's 20 inches. And then I'm going to give myself about an, another inch and a half so I can have another knot. I'm just going to cut that there. And this end is, is going to be raw. It's not going to be folded under, but I think it'll be okay. Because the, the original ones are not... Um, fold it under so we should be okay so here we go and then I can trim this off a little bit okay I have this sewn have the knot in it and I'm going to fold it in half find my center point and then I'm just going to place it right over where I have the bias tape overlapped I'm just going to place that right there to cover that and now I'm going to stitch it right down here in the seam allowance right there I just have my regular presser foot on at the moment. I'm stitch across and then back stitch. And then stitch across again. And that should keep it nice and secure. Stitched on here. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill this and uh, we'll see how this works. Okay, I have my two original wraps here. This one had wider spaces and it holds the aluminum crochet hooks. It's a really good size for those. This one has narrower channels and it's holding the steel crochet hooks. And steel crochet hooks are shorter than aluminum ones and they have finer hooks on them. And, um, you know, this case you know it works fine but you know there's it's just a little bit floppy up here and here's the one that I made as my prototype and I put some plastic crochet hooks in them these are vintage ones that are wider at the bottom and my channels were 5 8 of an inch apart and that worked well for these so um, the one I just finished channels are half inch apart I made my flap longer because I want to put these vintage steel crochet hooks in and I'll eventually organize these like I have my other cases are I have them in size smallest to largest so there we go I have still have a little bit of room here but it's not like a big gap and this will just roll up and this will come around and then I can tie it. Now if you find um, that you make one of these and you want your tie in a different place, you know, certainly go ahead and do that. Put your tie, if you want it down lower, you can put it lower. But there is my wrap for my steel crochet hooks. Here's my wrap for my plastic crochet hooks. And you know, tie a bow or not, whatever you want to in those. So here we go. Um, overall, between these two, the only thing different between other than the size of the channels is I used quilt batting in this one and I used fusible fleece in this one. And I like the fusible fleece better. It's a little firmer. Um, it holds a little bit better. This is... Um, you know softer it's an 80 20 batting so it's um, you know softer but it still works and then of course again here I have some short crochet hooks and some long ones I think if they were all the same size um, it might be a little little better
and hold them a little bit better. And I think I do like the squared off edge better than the rounded edge. So, you know, try either way and see what you like. I hope you enjoyed this video on making these crochet hook wraps. I still have a couple more to go. I still have quite a few crochet hooks that I need to find uh, a good storage solution for. And uh, then I'll have to do something with all those knitting needles that I have inherited. So um, I think this has come in handy. I think I'll be able to keep track of them better um, and, you know, not lose them. And um, then they'll be handy if I ever want to take a, a project with me somewhere. I can just grab a set of crochet hooks and off I go. Um, now normally when you do a crochet project you're just using one hook but um, you know this is a good storage solution I think and they will fit e easily in a drawer somewhere so um, I think this is a, a good solution for me anyway and uh, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something and um, if you like this video, I hope you will click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you'll consider subscribing. And don't forget to click the notification bell so that you'll be notified when the next video comes up. And uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Sunrise Quilt Studio. And also on my blog at sunrisequiltstudio.wordpress.com. And there are links to both in the description box below. So until the next time, I hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.